Broadcasting live from the moon and back, this is The Coin Chat, the most trusted voice for all things cryptocurrency. Each week, we dissect an important issue and cut through the noise and misinformation out there in the world of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and ICOs, capturing the facts that truly matter to you that will give you an edge in this fast-moving emerging market. The who, what, where, when, and how of what you need to know in crypto to get ahead so you don't get left behind. Now, here are your co-hosts, financial and crypto experts, Yuri Cataldo and Steve Good. Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chats with... Yuri Cataldo, as always. And, and, and I remembered my name this time. You did. And we're cutting through the noise. The, what are we doing? We're cutting through the noise and misinformation in cryptocurrency to tell you what really matters on our last episode of 2018 as we head into 2019. Good mm-hmm. to kind of cough through kind of some of the weird, crazy, mad stuff that we've seen to kind of round off the year. And Yuri, I know you're itching to start <laughs> with the first one, which is bizarre. So... How about it? Excellent. I mean, anyway, 2018 has been a bizarre year because I remember us having this conversation a year ago and we had nothing but high, high hopes and they have all been dashed to pieces. But to round off our bizarre things at the end of 2019, I'm sorry, 2018, actually this just happened last night. Uh, Litecoin put its logo at the UFC 232. And what's the UFC? At the Ultimate Fighting Championship? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay, cool. Just for all of our audience listeners who don't know (laughs) what the UFC is, it's like these, is it the guys in cages that are fighting? Is that what it is? Yes. Octagon. Yeah, it's the guys in the octagon. It's the absolute crazy madness. And Litecoin put their logo out there as one of the sponsors? They did. What Uh, message are they trying to tell us? So on December 29th, they put in there, it's like, there's a couple photos online. It's dead center. So if you read their, their sad press release, this is what they're, they're very excited about putting their logo on there, but there's nothing, there's no real correlation between Litecoin and what's happening at the UFC. What they really came out with, and they said they hoped that this sponsorship will be a maybe long-term relationship with the UFC, it's already sad, and they look forward to the possibility of doing something amazing with the UFC. So that right there, a lot of maybe at best. And, yeah, exactly. And, and the real question is of all the things that they spend their money to sponsor, why it is it, why is it that they're spending crypto money connected to fighters in a cage? Right. I mean, maybe there's, maybe they did some homework and there's a, a higher relationship. Actually, I don't even know. We, we actually could look that up. Do you I know don't what? Know. We did an episode, you know, earlier in the year about EOS and we both gave it a thumbs down for a lot of things. Right. I'd like to suggest we do a follow-up episode in 2019 on kind of a roundup of Litecoin and whether or not they've got their game straight or, you know, I, I mean, for me, 18 months ago, I would have been talking about Litecoin being the silver, you know, and, go, and right. Bitcoin being the gold, you know, equivalent. And right, I and we did. And yeah, we did talk about that. And Litecoin to me now is just... Uh, again, it's just a coin that you can send money from A to B. All the promises that they made last year just didn't, or this year didn't happen. It's still no, just a coin. Um, yeah. And, and as not you a good coin off, anymore. And, and well, you mentioned off, ca- off camera, but I'll, I'll bring it back up. So Charlie Lee, the founder, you know, sold all his coins at the height of the market. He Isn't did. even really, you know, owning anything now, or if he is, he hasn't disclosed it. And He's out there so proud of the fact that they're promoting themselves at the UFC. How are they planning to use the UFC, the, the, the UFC coin, the Litecoin <laughs> at the UFC? Have they even said what the relationship is between Litecoin crypto and the UFC fighters? No, no, none whatsoever. Okay. They just, from what I can tell, they just paid probably a lot of money to put their logo dead center in an octagon. Which would be no fight. different than going to the Arsenal game in the UK or going yeah. to a baseball game, football game or what have you in sport and having just people sponsor. But if that's all it is, that's fine. But then they should just say that's all it is. Yeah, I think that's all it is. I I didn't watch. I I did find that very bizarre too when you shared that with me. I thought, why are they, what's the (laughs) the hype? I mean, you know, of all the things, couldn't they have come up with something a little bit more congruent with what they're trying to do or with more relevancy to a wider population of the world than fighters in a cage? Yeah, exactly. Or said that we are, you know, setting up a system so that at the fight event, 
users could use Litecoin to buy anything. Like right. even, even at their own conference, the best they could have come up with was using Litecoin to buy candy. That was it. Yeah, I saw that too. And they were very proud they were very of it. Very Well, yeah, but that wasn't the Litecoin guy. That was actually uh, it was Kerry Washington, who's a a Litecoin oh, right. evangelist, who was at the conference right. and at his presentation, and he said, "Look, we can buy candy with Litecoin," and everyone was like, uh, "Yay, dollars too, mate!" Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> so, he hasn't congratulations, made... Gary Washington, for pointing out the office. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it's been a sad year for Litecoin. I've got an interesting one. So also in the news, trying to, to round off 2018, is a company called Madison Holdings, which people may know as uh, Madison, the wine company that was very big with you know the, the wholesale of wine distribution and sales, have mm -hmm. decided to buy BitOcean or a $30 million worth of BitOcean in Japan. And at the same time, Bitnex, one of the other big exchanges, is buying uh, potentially... 51% of Madison Holdings, which oh. is really weird because they're really, a, they were historically a wine company um, trading on the Hong Kong exchange and then more recently moved into financial services and asset management. And then they kind of threw in this thing about, oh, we do, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining on the side or crypto mining and blockchain on the side. I have no idea why would a retail and wholesale wine company move into blockchain and crypto. It starts to remind me of another good roundup for 2018, which would be the, I know you, you know what I'm going to say now, the tea company. Oh my God. Yes. I forgot about the, the tea, a year ago, yeah. we about the tea company. So there, there's another good example. Went, yeah, because they basically wanted to rename themselves, rename themselves the, the, the tea blockchain company or something. And yeah. The, the Long Island Blockchain Company. That's that's really, yeah, Long Island Blockchain Company. So there's another good example of how weird 2018 is. <laughs> that's right. And then we right. saw A year ago, like, you could just add blockchain to your name and then suddenly your stock would spike. Well, I remember yeah. that Atari had said, or the former part of Atari, you know, the current company, had said they were going to put blockchain into their organization. We, we heard Kodak, yeah. was it Kodak? Said Kodak they were, was, Kodak was going to put licensing on the blockchain. Nothing further in the news about those, but those would be no. interesting things to see what happens. But mm -hmm. I, I don't really get the whole, what does a wine company have to do with crypto unless they're planning on accepting crypto to buy, sell wine. And that's cool. I mean, that's a good case for adoption if that's what yeah. we're doing and where we're heading. But is that the case or is this just another weird example of, Bitmex is buying them, so they have to buy something else. I don't know. I don't get the the relationship, but it's it is weird, weird and cool, and weird and not cool. And I don't really know what else to say about that one. Yeah, yeah. There's not much else to say about that. But you're right. There's a lot of that weird stuff happening at the end of this year. So did you hear about about the? Well, I mean, Craig Wright. If people don't know who Craig Wright is, he's the guy that decided to go for a war with Bitcoin Cash. And I think there's something in this that we really got to do a full story on this next next year. And really talk about Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, which is the forked mm -hmm. version of Bitcoin Cash. But this is kind of just a quick a side note. So sure. he had been a business partner with a, another guy in the U.S. and Florida. They had a company together in the early days of Bitcoin. And this guy, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he had passed away from a, from a disease. A very mm -hmm. unfortunate thing because he was a young guy, young cryptographer. Right. Many people speculate he might have been one of the original people associated with the group of people that created Bitcoin, might have been part of the Satoshi Nakamoto group, may or may not have been. Yeah. Needless to say that the, the Bitcoins that were sitting with the, the Craig Wright's business partner, which are worth someplace between one and 10 billion, depending on when you look at the current value of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, they were removed from the wallets. So mm -hmm. uh, this guy's twin brother, realized all the coins were gone, realized that Craig supposedly took them, allegedly took them, filed a whole bunch of court cases in Florida, and, the, and then Craig Wright this week tried to get it all dismissed, and the judge basically said, F you, uh, we're not dismissing this, we'll dismiss right. two cases out of about 10 or 12 or whatever it is, and all the rest stand, uh, we welcome you to come to the States and defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and and interestingly enough, those coins that he took may be the ones that he claimed he was going to go out and dump in the market to, to cause the whole Bitcoin to drop. So there's a really weird kind of connection here between coins potentially stolen and co coins potentially being dumped into the market to cause the hash war that we saw with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. So right. 
I mean, just a weird way to end the year with, with Craig Wright just in the midst of yet another battle. Again, negativity, a guy who's clearly not in the, the, the realms of doing what's good for crypto, but good for himself. And it just seems to be a regular occurrence. So yeah. well, if Craig's listening to this, maybe you want to come and defend yourself. I'd like to know <laughs> the real story behind your game because I, I don't get it. It's just everything yeah. I hear about him is just, or read about him. And of course, what I read is what I read. And I have to form my opinion by knowing people. So I always like to know what's really going on. But a court case is a court case. And trying to dismiss things and getting it thrown out by a judge, it says a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a, unfortunately, with that case, there's a lot of weird, shady stuff going on. So yeah. I'd also like to hear more from Craig if he's willing to talk about it. Well, we'll, we'll post this to his Twitter and see if he, uh, yeah. he'll take an interest in setting the record straight about what's really going on. And then maybe we'll have to go and talk to Roger Ver and see if he'd like to give his version of the story <laughs> and go from there. Because exactly. we need to get to the truth on some of these things and get it out and get the facts out on the ground. So, but yeah, totally. so those are some really weird things that have happened. I mean, certainly the Long Island iced tea one is another good example of weird things right. that happened during the year. I think right, you right. also found some, you mentioned to me, you found some research about the Chinese China. market and about ICOs. Yes. Do you want to just kind of tell our listeners and our watchers, our subscribers about that as well? Sure. So, oh, you want, you want me to talk about, so the ICOs, and I don't know how relatively true this is, but according to, this was an article that came out a couple of days ago, according to Coinbase, so this is looking at 2018, they said that 78% of ICOs turned out to be scams. And most of the ICOs did not go through any kind of vetting process. And that was again, their research. What do they mean by vetting process? It doesn't, the article doesn't go and say directly what that means. Okay. So I can't say without any. Uh, you know, the thing is for me, that. having lived in the world of being, you know, in the crypto advisory space and talking to lots of companies, yeah. I would say that in many cases, I wouldn't have said that they were scams, the ones I met, but just didn't have a sound business idea. And so to the average person that looks at it and goes, eh, this isn't, this isn't anything, it might look like a scam, but I would say a lot of them were people who legitimately thought they had good ideas and were looking to just jump in on the hype. But yeah. I think that 78% probably represents a lot of people jumping on the hype a lot of really stupid ideas and bad ideas, a lot of ideas that had nothing to do with crypto that were just there for the hype. And to be fair, there were a lot of scams out there. We've covered a few, surely not, certainly not that many, but um, interesting, yeah. 78% is a lot. Yeah, that's what they said. So I know, I'll, I'll do more digging on that. Um, but basically look, the entire article was about how they believe, and we've talked about this, how sure. uh, a lot of the new, new uh ICOs will be working with exchanges. So no longer just straight up ICOs, but working with exchanges to vet that they are in fact real and, and yeah. show, so show it's on that it. similar note about, you know, yeah. the, the fraudulent stuff, because you know, this is the year kind of ending the year of a very tough bear market and everyone wants to point fingers. So there was another uh, report that was an independent report done by a couple of crypto advisory guys. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and they, they assessed about, 30 exchanges. Uh, notably, they left out some really big ones, but they claimed this was the top 30, but KuCoin wasn't even in the list, which I thought was really bizarre. But yeah. their report was basically to say, there's a lot of fake volume on the exchanges and it's not real volume and what have you. Now, sure. I personally went to several exchanges to executives that I know at those exchanges to verify their data without them knowing the report was out yet. Mm -hmm. and was able to verify their numbers to some, de to some degree, uh, breaking it down into different categories, one being the actual trades going on between people like you and me, and yeah. the other part of it being the market-making part, which lots of people in the crypto world like to call fake trading or you know, fake trading bots. The reality is it happens in the NASDAQ. It happens on the FTSE. It's a, it's a means for bringing markets together between buyers and sellers, and it's a necessary transaction that takes place but people are claiming that that's, you know, creating fake volume. I know there are exchanges out there doing fake volume. I met one in Singapore. I will not say who it is. I was shocked when they heard what they were saying to me. And I said, I don't think it's a good idea. I really disagree with your approach. And I yeah. told them off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention that in my previous episode, but you know, our previous Singapore episode, but I did meet an exchange that was talking about fake volume and I was disgusted by it because I said, that's not good business. Um, yeah. But 
you know, needless to say, there's a report out there that's created a lot of controversy.